Okay, here's an individual who says, I'm so thankful for your channel. It helps to transform lives. I am a dentist, and many of my patients are type 2 diabetics. Interesting, because you wouldn't think a dentist would have much involvement with whether or not a person is diabetic. But he says, the first thing I do when finding out that they're diabetic is give them resources to fix their diabetes. And he says, you are a resource. I insist they check out. So this dentist tells them to go to Beat Diabetes on YouTube and watch some of my videos. He says, I want to let you know that when they get back with me, and he says he gives them some other resources as well, but he says when they get back with me, they appreciate your channel the most. I, can't, I cannot say thank you enough. Well, that's awesome. Uh, to, to, and uh, he's not the first medical professional that has expressed appreciation or has indicated that they are sharing with others uh, about my channel. So I just think that is tremendous. This uh, little simple Texas guy, uh, little simple Texas minister, and yet uh, dentists and doctors and endocrinologists and nutritionists are appreciating uh, this channel. And uh, I, I don't see myself as some uh, very deep individual when it comes to diabetes. Uh, I, I see myself as the little boy. You know the story about the emperor who was conned by these con men who told him they pretended to pr prepare him some clothes. And they said, but if a person doesn't have a pure heart, they won't see the clothes. So uh, everybody decided they better act like the emperor had clothes on. So they would demonstrate they had a pure heart. But there was one little boy as the emperor walked down the street naked with uh, supposedly with these fake clothes and a little boy who cried out, the emperor has no clothes on. And then everybody started realizing it must be true because they, they all could see he was naked. And uh, so the little boy saved the day and exposed the fallacy that the emperor was wearing some kind of beautiful clothes. So I'm that little boy. I'm this little simple-minded guy from Texas saying the emperor has no clothes. All these nutritionists and all these uh, this food pyramid that you've been hearing about that tells you to eat carbs, carbs, and more carbs, uh, there's, there's no clothes to that doctrine. There's no clothes to that advice. And if you don't believe me, uh, test your blood sugar and ask yourself, why is it my A1C never gets better? They tell me to eat brown bread. I'm eating brown bread. They, they tell me to eat brown rice. I'm eating brown rice. They tell me to eat a uh, breakfast cereal that's got a lot of fiber to it. I'm eating that, but why am I not improving? The answer is that advice just isn't cutting it. And of course, we all know what the definition of insanity is, right? It's doing the same thing that hasn't worked ever before and expecting uh, better results this time, and it's not going to happen. And I am all for things that bring good results. And, and the, the standard advice of just eating so-called healthy carbs does not work. It has not worked in the past. It does not work now. It will not work in the future. A uh, hundred years from now, if anybody's ever still watching my, my uh, YouTube videos, if there is a YouTube a hundred years from now, uh, it won't work then. All right. So anyway, uh, people know that carbs are a problem. Uh, anybody that has any sense at all but they have this tremendous urge and desire to hold on to carbs some way, somehow. So they decide it's the highly whitish processed carbs that are a problem. But don't say anything about my sweet potato because that is healthy and natural and comes straight up out of the ground, baby. That is a good thing. But that sweet potato, if you'll bother to check your blood sugar, uh, it ain't too good. You know... What we want is something that works fast and works well. A hundred years ago, America had roads and there were cars. A hundred years ago would be 1922. There were roads crisscrossing America and there were cars. But if you were going to go from, say, New York to California in one of those cars... And on the, on the roads that they had in those days, it would take you a long, long time because the cars weren't that great, although they were improving. 
and the roads were just going this way and that way. There was no, there were no interstate highways. There was no consistent pattern of roads. You might have one road going this way and another going that way, and you just have to uh, get on the roads the best you could. Some of them weren't even paved. And uh, some, you'd have to go slightly north for a while, then slightly south for a while, going up and down, and this road and that road, and, and almost every road, you'd come to a town, and you'd have a stop sign, then another stop sign, then another stop sign, and uh, it would take you forever to get anywhere because of the road situation. And in, in the 1950s, I think it was under Dwight Eisenhower as president, they began to develop what we now call interstate highways. And there's no stop signs. There's, there are exits where you can get off if you need to, but you, don't, you can go for hours and hours and there's not a single stop sign. And they go straight. One may go straight from the uh, west to the east and the east to the west, and another one may go from the north to the south. Or if they do curve a bit, uh, they don't curve much. And you can hop on those interstate highways and maybe just make two or three changes of highways and go from one end of the country to the other. It is so much more efficient. You can get to your destination in a hurry. Now, when your A1C is ridiculously high and every day that goes by, you are damaging your body and you are hurting yourself and your organs are being destroyed and your, your, your life is a, is a total mess health-wise... You need a fast route. You need an interstate highway. You don't want a, a crisscrossing bunch of little scrawny roads with a bunch of stop signs that where you'll hardly be able to make any progress. You need an interstate highway to hop on and get to your destination in a hurry. So you go from 12 to an A1C of 5.7. How do you do that? Well, just what I've been preaching, and that's what our, our challenge was, the six-month challenge to lower your glucose. Yeah, it was kind of strict. It was kind of severe. I urged people to just have two meals a day, separated by about six hours with no snacking in between. Kind of severe, not what you're used to. That's not how you grew up. So you could say, man, Dennis, you're kind of strict. What I'm trying to do is to create an interstate highway for you where you can get from where you are, A1C of 12 or 10, down into the fives in about four to six months. Most people can. I can't guarantee it, obviously, but most people can. And we've heard from one after another, after another, after another, people that did just that. So why take a, a patchwork bunch, bunch of little roads, some of them paved, some of them dirt, stop signs all over the place uh, where you can hardly get up any speed? Why do that? when you can get on an interstate highway and get there in a hurry. And that's what time-restricted eating and low-carb eating will do for you, my friend. They will get you to your destination in a hurry. And they work so beautifully well. They, they work like nothing else. So the old standard of advice of uh, you eat plenty of carbs, but make sure they're healthy carbs— now, that's not a highway. That's barely a road at all. That's an unpaved dirt road that's just going to meander around and take you nowhere. But the low-carb eating and the time-restricted eating, intermittent fasting, maybe some longer fasting if your doctor will allow you and you're not on meds and insulin, that's the highway. It will get you where you need to go in a hurry. And who doesn't want that? When you are severely diabetic, you want to get there in a hurry. Probably most of you know my wife Benedicta, but few of you know the amazing paths God has led her to bring her to where she is today. Benedicta was orphaned at an early age and lived with an elderly stepmother growing to adolescence. They were so poor, Benedicta had to drop out of school and sell food door to door for them to survive. As a teen, Benedicta got a job as a housemaid, which developed into a nightmare. She was required to cook, clean, wash, take care of the children, and she had to get up at 4 a.m. every day just to get her work started. Worse than that, she was frequently beaten. At around 20, she moved to the huge city of Lagos where she started her own little business. Sometimes she prospered, but at other times she nearly starved and went days at a time without eating. At one point, she became so sick she passed out in her room and nearly died. She found herself outside of her body and she was able to see the splendors of heaven until she was sent back with a command to share her story. One day, however, her life changed when an American evangelist came to her community to preach. And of course, that was me. 
The rest, as they say, is history. Benedicta has shared her life story in a recently published autobiography, and you can get it on Amazon as either an ebook or a paperback. A link to this book on Amazon is in the description.